Welcome to another episode of Three Men and a War Game. I am Paul, and I play games sometimes. <laughs> nice, nice. I am Kevin, <laughs> and I attend game conventions sometimes. Uh, actually, upcoming this weekend, I'll be at Adapticon. And this is Potter, and I thought we were not doing these intros anymore. Me too, but that's that was enough. Okay <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. We just followed Paul's lead. No, that's no, fine. no, no. We didn't say we weren't doing them. We said we weren't like planning them out. Correct. Oh, is that what it is? Because okay. otherwise, what am I? What else am I going to say? Hi, I'm Paul. I don't know. Um, you saved a bunch of car insurance by switching to Geico. Well, see, that would have been a dumb intro. Yeah, right, I'm going to stop Let's us see. from digressing right now. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's do my job. That is, and pull, that is pull Kevin doing his very essential job. Yep. All right. So, Paul, what are we talking about tonight? Uh, we're going to be talking about you, sir, and your um, amazing abilities at Flesh and Blood, because uh, we're in danger of becoming a Flesh and Blood podcast. No, that's not happening. But also, also, <laughs> I'm not that good at the game. Um he lies. Would, yeah, yeah, I'm not really. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> what have you guys been up to hobby wise? Um, I actually went out the other day and I picked up Yoda and Chewbacca for my Legion, as well as a another unit of Wookies. And so I built my first unit of Wookies. I built Yoda, both Yodas, because it's awesome. He comes with two two different versions of myself in that kit. So that was amazing. And I built mm-hmm. Chewie. And then um, I have been building uh, Dynamis for my Gundam kits the, for the better part of the last like three weeks. I've um, just been taking my time with it. So that's what I've been building model-wise. Nice. Um, I, I, uh, I have plans to hobby. Um, <laughs> I can give you my I can I can give you my my plans and we can see if if I do any of it next week. Um, I I did get a I did I did actually buy a mini. I did get a uh, German eighty eight uh, for Chain of Command because it's totally uh, way too much gun for that size game. So I thought that would be fun to just blast bobs americans off the table um and uh i've been i've been building um a gundam when i've been sitting down and having time so real realistically though i've been i've been doing um all kinds of stuff around the house uh trying to get shit fixed up and especially now that it's it's nice out trying to get the yard so this way i don't look like a suburban um oh redneck (laughs) and uh yeah, so I've been I've been super busy with that, but I have been, um, I, yeah, when I've been sitting down, I've been I've been able to um, work on uh, the Gundam that I'm building, uh, nicknamed Feathers. I'm sure Potter or Chops can give you the actual name of him because wing I don't Gundam. know any of their names. The the Wing Gundam Zero, yes, yeah, Wing I Zero. Mean, isn't isn't that just the show? Gundam no, wing, right? wait, wait, all, well, yes, but also the name of that specific Gundam. And it's not the only Gundam in that show. Yes, there are several Gundams in that show. Okay, well, yes. Yeah, so, Just so like there you go. How so, in, in in Gundam Double O, there is in fact a Double O Gundam. <laughs> that is correct. Yes, that is that is the one that I would say that I know anything about at this point. Yeah, but um, just like that, Gundam Wing has a uh, has a wing Gundam. Yeah. I just, yeah, I just, I just didn't know that. A- anyway, anyway, what have you been working on, Chops? <laughs> uh, I've actually, I've actually been painting. I've uh, been painting some mini moto models for Bushido because Bushido is uh, against the odds starting to turn around in the Madison area. And it looks like we're actually going to have a regular play group that is playing the game, talking about the game, excited about the game. So, Holy no shit. cats, guys. The game I've been talking about for like three years. We might finally do an episode on it. I might actually get some games in. Very, very excited about that. Yeah, that would be amazing. Seen... And 
I support this. Yeah, I've seen yeah. a lot of uh, traffic going on in the uh, the Bushido the channel Bushido. lately. Yeah, yeah, we've been yeah. really excited about it locally, and I mean, excited about it enough that I'm painting again. And it had been I've taken a pretty long hiatus from picking up a paintbrush. So awesome! Yeah, I'm glad you got something to inspire you to do that. Yeah, for sure. Me too. <laughs> yeah, it's and and that's kind of how I feel with. Uh, we're, Bob and I are planning our next chain of command game in our campaign that's been held up for, you know, COVID because we played the last game like days before before everything went crazy in the world. Um, so I'm feeling the the urge to get back to to uh, painting some of those guys to be mm -hmm. to be ready for that. Well, yeah, let's exciting. also be. Let's also be fair, you know, we've also kind of monopolized some of your barn time with now having a giant group of people joining the barn, the barnstorming. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that's allowed other games to be played. But I mean, even at that, uh, just with the, the limits on time, um, Bob and I just have not been able to, to sit down and do that. But he's back to his old wily ways of of planning out the table two months before we play. So this way we know what we're doing. It's, it's again, really cool that he does that and thinks so much about it because he knows exactly like the road that we're fighting across last time. He knows exactly how that's going to be like leading us into town. So it's, it's just, it's just crazy how he's like visualized it all. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, he's got an amazing mind for storytelling in story kind story based gaming. Like the, the ideas that he comes up with, what, what he shared about like some of his old war machine scenarios and stuff like that. Like the, he's definitely got an eye for storytelling. It's awesome. What we need to do, and this is a side point, we need to get him to run a map campaign where he is the keeper of everybody on the map and we tell him where we move to and he tells us if we have an opponent to fight. I'm, uh, I'm on board with it. So that's my, that might be something we can work out. Anyway, anyway, sorry. But, but um, quick, yeah. quick side thing that I just remembered before we move on. I did okay. actually, um, this, I didn't get to build them because they come pre-built, but I actually did get caught up on my Baratheons and some nice. models for my secret Osoifi army. Oh boy, that's exciting! I'm excited to hear about you guys playing that more. I've also been I I've, I haven't been mentioning it, but I have at least one box of everything that's come out for Greyjoy. I've been keeping up with that. Yeah. Um, so that, um, that yeah, I got the, I got the crossbowman. Nice. Uh, oh, I'm yeah. so I'm so behind on Crisis Protocol. Like when all the new when all the new. Um, uh, Midnight Sun stuff came out. I just, I got behind it. I haven't picked it up. I really needed to go out and get all the new Doctor Strange fr and friends. Yeah. Our so, community but I did get, is getting yeah. stronger. So exciting yeah, I got stuff. my I got my Baratheon uh, crossbowman. So and then I got nice. uh, yeah, I got a unit for my secret project army. Very cool. So, so, so somewhat tangential. I've caught up a little bit on the MCU. I watched Loki and Shang Chi. Hell yeah! Yeah. Nice. That means, uh, you're, that means you're basically yeah. caught up. I mean, Eternals, but I guess you can skip Etern that Eternals and, and Eternals and Hawkeye? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Hawkeye. Eternals and Hawkeye. Because you've already seen Spider-Man. So, yeah. Yep. I've already seen Spider-Man. So, yeah. I think that's all we have left. And then we'll be ready for Doctor Strange. Cool. Yep. Sweet. Oh, Moon Knight next week. Yep. Is that next week already? No yes, shit. Next Wednesday. Next week. Yep. Uh, that Excellent means I gotta, I gotta kill, I gotta kill Hawkeye this weekend then. So, yep. okay, all right. So uh, clearly, Topic. we have not chatted in a while, and yes. we should just have a <laughs> should just have a whole episode of us catching up with each other, just chit chatting, and um, see if people actually want to listen to that. Yeah, no shit, right? Um, I, I think that would be fun. Have it, have it. Uh, we can all sit here and build Gundams and talk. Anyway, anyway, you've been playing a lot of Flesh and Blood. Uh, sh a metric shitload, Paul. Like, I was, yeah, like, uh, yeah, I was yeah. like, a lot is an understatement. Yeah, for me, it, it's funny when I, I you know, ha would be telling people, like, well, I'm primarily a miniatures gamer, but, you know, I picked up Flesh and Blood, and it's starting to feel disingenuous to say that. <laughs> well, I mean, I've, I, so here's the thing about that. I've known you long enough to know that you were an on hiatus card player. It's tr it's true. It's real like I'm not even going to pretend like that isn't true, Paul. That's well, like because you've that also been competitive 
card games is like my 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 whole background. That's your well, bread and butter, man. Well, because you've no. also been participating in the the fan the fan remake or not remake, but like revival of Netrunner, haven't you as well? Oh yeah, I've, I've been I've been playing a crap load of Netrunner. Well, Nisse for the last seven weeks too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So my 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 card game is in full swing right now. Yep. I mean, as soon as as soon as you got all like, as soon as your eyes lit up and you decided you were in love with flesh and blood, I was like, oh yeah, he's back. Yeah, Kevin yeah. is back I, and his, I mean, he, he some, just jumped right back in the pool. There's something about it, you know. I never thought I'd get back into another TCG. I mean, LCGs. I was always going to try every one of them because, like you said, I've always been a card gamer. So it's uh, it's in me to try them. And I, I gave Flesh and Blood a chance because it looked like it was a thing that was up and coming, right? And now, yeah, it's definitely my main game. Like to to pretend otherwise would be completely disingenuous. I've played over over 200 games now since last March. So um, a lot, just a ton. Yeah, you I mean, I those think, are rookie numbers. This, you got to pump them up, there, buddy. Yeah, I think I think at this point in time, I think it's just safe to say that you're just a gamer. Yeah, I, that's fair. But let's the, the topic du jour, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's get into um, it. So so you went out and and played in a fairly large surprise flesh and blood tournament. Yes, yeah, the biggest tournament um, for any game I've ever played in, actually. Really. How many people? Uh, just over 500 were entrants Holy into the main shit. event. Uh, which about, which uh, tournament? About a, uh, the, so, yeah, uh, let's thank you, Potter. Let's back up. So Flesh and Blood has a multi-tiered professional circuit. So there are – and there there's a casual side. Like a – you know, it's like a it, – it's called casual for casual rel. And then there's a professional, professional rel league. Um, and the casual leagues – there is a, like your in-store tournaments, like your armories. I played in an armory tournament last night, actually. Um, so uh, that's funny, too. I wasn't sick of Flesh and Blood after a weekend of Flesh and Blood, so I played more <laughs> Flesh and Blood in my Flesh and Blood last night. Um, Do you anyway. need some Flesh and Blood for your Flesh and Blood? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. But the, uh, <laughs> the the this whole diatribe that I've been going on is to say that the bottom level professional event – so. The first level of professional events in Flesh and Blood is called The Calling. Uh, and it, The Calling is also the only open entrance professional event. Every other professional event is invitation only. Um, so The Calling, uh, the top eight players in The Calling get invited to the Pro Tour. So if you go to a Calling, you are trying to place in the top eight so that you can get your invite to the bigger uh, like serious money. And that's not to say it's not serious money here. The winner of this tournament got $7,000. Um, oh, Jesus, <laughs> but the bigger, the, there's a, there's like a million dollar prize purse over the course of this upcoming professional season, like in terms of total available winnings. So you can win a lot of money playing flesh and blood right now. So people go, See, into I can't, these- I, I, I can't have my wife listen to this because then she'll be like, why aren't you better at this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I would. Well, and we'll we'll talk about how not that good at this game I am. But um, the fact of the matter is, it's uh, it, when somebody when a company says, do you want a chance at playing this game professionally? Come out to Indianapolis and answer the call. Many hundreds of people do. Right. Um, I would say there were over a thousand flesh and blood players in attendance because they had wow. uh, they Jeez. they had yeah they had lots of side events going on and at these events they also all of the side events give out prize tickets for winning and there's a prize ticket wall with exclusive play mats exclusive uncut sheets oversized cards all kinds of stuff that you can win by playing in the side events so the draw isn't just for the ultra competitive it's just it's just everybody who plays flesh and blood you know if you're in the area and you can make it you should come to this event and there was also a magic, a twenty-five thousand dollar magic tournament. So all Jesus. I think, all in all, yeah, the total attendance was over two thousand for the pe- number of people that were there. 
So what was so I I don't think we I don't think we said this. What what was the uh, event? What was it? So yeah, the event was called SCG Con. That was the name of it, or Star Cities Star City Games Con, which is a big, huge uh, online retailer of uh, collectibles. And at SCG Con, they were holding two different things. They were holding a uh, MTG 25K, so the Magic the Gathering 25K tournament, and the Calling for Flesh and Blood. And so the fallen, the calling consisted of the tournament, which was called the calling, as well as a battle hardened tournament, which was also a tournament you could play in to win a pro tour invite, as well as uh, on demand drafts all day and many, many, many events that you could sign up for to win prize tickets. So basically, wow. it was just like a full weekend that I mean, like a thousand tables and just uh a full weekend of vendors selling cards, uh, people buying boxes, cracking boxes, people playing games, just everywhere you look is people playing flesh and blood and magic. All right. So let let me ask you this for comparison's sake. And I know that the game is nowhere near as big as magic, but what was, what was the player field for magic? So the, uh, the, the, the thing that I think felt really good as a flesh and blood player is the, it, it was, very hard to tell if there were more pag- more magic players than flesh and blood players. It was oh, that's good. if it the closest split I would be comfortable telling you is is like fifty two percent or fifty five percent magic players to forty five percent flesh and blood for total attendance. That's uh, that's, that's still something good. Man. I mean, because flesh and blood's what two two, two three years old. Years old? Yeah, two yeah. And a half, three for years a game. Old. For a game that's that year, that many years old, to to have that close of a split with Magic, that yeah, that's that's, a, that's strong. That's good. Yeah, it's white hot, dude. And um, yeah, the other thing, the other thing too is there were a bun a bunch of ex Magic pros are either playing Flesh and Blood or the commentators now for the, like the professional streams. For wow. flesh and blood, and you have to think if you're going to be a commentator for the game, you have to know the game well enough. Right, and it's also I watched some of the trip Twitch stream um, after I got home, and it's very clear that these guys who used to be Magic casters love this game. So, yeah, wow, that's, that's, awesome. that's a serious, serious stuff that there are there are X, you know, X. Um, I forget what they used to call it, like um, man. I sound dumb because I'm mumbling now, but the old magic tours, the the professional magic G, GPs, there we go. Magic GP winners are now playing flesh and blood. So mm. yeah, big deal. No, I'm that here says, for it. That says a lot right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am. I am here for that down with the man. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. A, it's yeah. A, you got to go. With the, you got to go with the punk rock, the punk rock game. But um, the young so start. So other other questions, guys. What, do you, what kind of questions who, do you have for you? someone? Okay, so I, okay, so I'm assuming this was a so obviously this was not Blitz format. This was classic constructed, yeah, classic, classic constructed, constructed format. So yeah, and actually, you, I so before you ask that, I know what you're going to ask. Before you ask, I just thought of something that's really cool. So we got there on okay. Friday. The tournament was Friday. Fr- the the convention was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We got there on Friday night, and they had this really awesome format called Shapeshifter. Um, and so shapeshifter is a format where you get six packs. So like it's a sealed format, except for it's two packs. It was our, our shapeshifter was two packs of Everfest, uh, two packs of tales of Aria and two packs of Monarch. Oh, that's cool. I like that. I'm on board with that. That sounds fun. So you open the packs and you can play any token hero, even if you don't pull them, any token hero and any token weapon. The weapon doesn't have to match the hero. You can play any weapon with any hero and you can have two and and you can put any cards you want in your deck out of the six. The only exception is that if you play a specialization card, it has to be for that hero. Very cool. That's let me tell you. It led to some busted shit. So I played chain in the <laughs> in the in the shapeshifter, and I realized as I was building my decks because chain's ability just says uh, you can create a soul shackle to give any shadow or rune blade card action card go again. And so mm. uh, Leviah's cards say shadow brute, and those are shadow cards. 
So you can play Chain's ability to give go again to Levias cards. <laughs> oh god. Gross. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was really fun. I ended up doing really well in that turn. I went I did a I did two and one. So I won the first two and then lost my third game. Just barely, just barely. Because everybody's deck was busted. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, right. And it was just really fun to play. It's like one of those things where when everything is broken, nothing's broken, right? And so right. like mm-hmm. every everybody was like surprising me like with a more busted thing than the last person. So it was really fun. That's awesome. Yeah, I like that. That, 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 that really sounds like a lot of like fun. Like mm-hmm. Exactly. Highly, highly recommended if you've ever played Flesh and Blood to look into Shapeshifter and trying a Shapeshifter seal. So fun. Yeah. All right. Hey, so, Bab, you hearing that? <laughs> hmm? Yeah, Bab. No, <laughs> yeah. let's do that. Let's do some shapeshifter. All right, our, our, so, lo- our local, our local hype man. So, yep. so Chris, your so, question to me was going to be, who did I play in the calling? Yes, who did you play in the main cash tournament? Yeah, so I in the calling, um, which is funny. I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't make the decision to play until the calling in the calling until the morning I woke up because I was just going to play side events. But I woke up and I was like, nah, fuck it. I came all the way to Indianapolis. I'm playing in this tournament. Yeah, you might as well. Of course. Yeah. Well, it's 50 bucks, right? So it's like, you know, I could play in in two or three side events for the same cost. But anyway, I, I decided to throw my hat in the ring for the calling and I played you're, Chain. You're, you're too good at this game for fucking side quests, man. I don't know. I like I like playing in side events because there's less stress. And we'll talk. I want to talk about that a lot, too. Like, not no, not so much like about how I did, which was, you know, just above middling, but um, m- mostly to talk about the experience of playing and the, and the pressure of playing in such a big event. But, all, but anyway, to answer your question, I played Chain because um, I felt that if I was going to play in the tournament, I was going to play to win, right? I'm going to play right. to to try and I, my goal was to make it in the top half of the field. That was what I decided. It's like if I pay the $50 and I'm in the top half of entrance, I'm going to be happy with my performance. And even though I love Levia and Levia is my main, it is a joke to play Levia into a professional. I mean, it, unless I, unless I was very good, like I'm not saying that you can't play here and be successful, but I'm not good enough player, and I can't read the especially into some of the the matchups that are current in this meta. I did not feel like I would be able to win a lot of games playing Levia, so I played Chain because I'm a strong Chain player. I understand my Chain deck, uh, and I felt more confident in my ability to win into this current meta with Chain. So right. I played Chain. No, I mean, I think that's the I think that's the right call. You play to your strengths. So mm-hmm. I mean, and again, if you're going to go in there and you're going to play to win, I mean, and, and play for keeps, you're you're gonna play what you think is going to. Is going to play yep. to win. You're going to win you the tournament. So I think yeah. you made the right call. Yeah, for me it was chain. So I think I think that kind of leads me into a question that I've been dying to ask. And mm. um, how, how? I mean, clearly you answered some of it in that you weren't necessarily planning on playing in the event. But yep. what? Even even if it's just that morning, what did you do to to get ready for it? You know, like like. Have you, were you playing a deck that you've already played? What was your, what was your thought process as you got yeah. psyched up and to so, do this? I mean, we, I had been known, I had known we were going to go for like the last three months, four months. And whenever they announced it, we, my buddy Howard and I were like, so we're driving down to do this. Right. And Howard actually ended up being a level one judge uh, in the, in the competition, which is actually also really prestigious and really cool. Judges are highly needed. Um, and it's a very demanding job. So it was really cool of him to do that anyway. Um, so when we said we were going, it's always been in the back of my mind that I might play. Right. And so I built, uh, a chain deck based on sort of what I, what the current thinking that the, the, the shadow rune blade could do. Um, and I played, I don't know, it's starting from like January or so. I probably played a dozen games with Chain, uh, iterating on the deck to make it more comfortable for my play style. So like, it's like, you know, my 80 cards isn't necessarily like a meta deck. It's the deck that plays best to my understanding of how to play Chain. Um, and I iterated it over probably 30 to 40 games between when we decided we were going to go to actually being there. And so I think that's sort of the prep, right? And the, And then... The morning that I decided, it was just like taking a big breath and being like, you came all the way here, just play. And if you scrub out and you go 0-3, then just 
play the side events like you planned, right? And that was kind of the mentality that I had going into it. I was confident playing the deck. Um, I knew going into it that to win the calling, you had to play 16 rounds over two days. So I wanted to play the game that I, I wanted to play the deck that I knew like the back of my hand, right? Like the one that I can look at a hand and instantly evaluate the best play lines. And that's just the chain deck. So those were the things that I was thinking about and, and how I got ready. So I, so it's being, I don't know TCGs at all. Um, and I've never obviously done a tournament or anything like that. Are you locked into one deck or can you change things throughout the process of the tournament? So every card game is different. Um, but for most, you register a deck list and that's what, how, okay. how fab works. So with fab, you have a, you have a sheet and you fill out the 80 cards that are in your list and your list can be randomly checked by a judge at any time and not adhering to your deck list is automatic disqualification. Um, and I think gotcha. disqualification from future tournaments. It's a very harsh ooh, penalty. Ooh, boy. Yep. So you you submit your 80 and you don't falter from it. Um, now, the nice thing, as you guys do know about Flesh and Blood, is that a classic constructed deck is, is 60 cards. Um, right. And so my chain deck had, had seven pieces of equipment and 73 cards. Um, and of those 73, I took between 60 and 65 into each game, depending on the hero I was facing. Right. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Um, so how'd you do? Uh, so I, I actually, it was, uh, it was really cool. Um, I don't want to like, I do do like an in-depth play by play, especially so, cause we don't want to be a flesh and blood co- podcast. So, you know, <laughs> I don't want to get too much into strategy, but generally I started very poorly. I, uh, at my first game, I was all nerves. Like my hands wouldn't stop shaking the whole game and I couldn't get out of my own head and I lost mom's um, spaghetti and all that. Yeah, that exactly. Except I did puke, right? Yeah, it was everywhere. It, but, <laughs> like m- mental puke all over the place. I um, I almost won the first game. Um, it just uh, a couple key things didn't go my way. Um, so the second game, I was frustrated with myself. And the first two turns, I made abysmal decisions like amateur. I've never played chain and I don't understand this deck at all style mistakes, like rookie mistakes. And my opponent recognized it. And even though I played turn three forward flawlessly, I just couldn't catch up from the deficit that I dug myself. Oh, and two. Um, Mm. and so at this point I'm just like, fuck it. Um, the worst that can happen now is I lose one more game and, and, uh, I go out and I, you know, make some trades with people out on the floor and play some side events or whatever, but that doesn't happen. Um, I win the next series in a row and go one game from making it to day two, which is you have to wow. only have two losses. So a- anybody who is with what well, the expression is X and two. So any number of wins, right? And in this case, it's five and two. Um, and so I went all the way up to the, the last possible match. Um, and, and honestly, that particular game that I lost was, the one that kicked me out of the tournament basically was the best game of flesh and blood that I've maybe ever played against a prism player. It was my chain into his prism. Um, and it was the most cerebral, uh, and excellent game of flesh and blood I've ever played. Most of my chain games, as an example, you get 55 minutes on the clock. Most of the games I played with chain at the calling, I was done with between 20, 18 and 25 minutes on the clock. That game Mm -hmm. went to two minutes left on the clock. Wow. It was deliberately yeah. played cerebral. Both of us were way into it. And also both of us were really jovial about it and, uh, you know, like smiling and laughing um, uh, and just being him being like, "Ooh, good play. Good line. You know, like so the whole experience was great. And even though I lost that game, it was really fun watching him go into day two and like finding him and like giving him, you know, giving him daps as he would win. He because he ended up winning the first two games the next day, too. And I was, you know, because he beat me. So I'm like, man, if you're going to beat me, I'm going to root for you for tomorrow. Oh, so yeah. you go up higher. Oh, yeah. Of course. Um, so it was really cool to run into him later, especially given the game he he played. So I ended up um, in just 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 outside of the top two hundred, but in the top two fifty. So um, that's awesome. Goal, goal met right. I, I think I was two hundred and fourteenth, um, which was Damn. better. Which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be in the top half of the field, and I was I cleared that goal. So at my first calling, I did just I just did just as well as I wanted to and I think I could have done better if I had been more relaxed to start with but 
it's really hard to um, like explain or even prepare yourself for the pressure of playing in an event that big. Cause like the, you know, the, you sit down and there are, you know, hundreds of other games going on to your left and right. Like it's, it's just tables like to the walls in a convention hall. Do you know what I mean? Like this mm-hmm. is like a small, like think of a, a, a hotel ballroom and magnify that by, or, or blow that up by eight. Um, oh no, right. I, I completely understand what you're talking about when I played GW games um, and games day was still a thing. I went yeah. to the Baltimore, I went to the Baltimore's games day and played in their big tournament uh, for it. I brought my, uh, it was a 2,500 point tournament i brought my black templars into it and i went uh i went two and one and so i I knew exactly what you're talking about like i um like with that many tables of people playing the giant hall there's like people screaming and wawing in the background and you're trying to concentrate yeah yeah it's it's crazy no i i get exactly 100 percent what you're talking about and also just the pressure of being in your own head and like you sit right. down and you're like, this is round one of 16 and I have to, I I, I have to win all but two of my games today. Right. Like it's uh it's just, it's, it's so much pressure and you don't realize how much that pressure is going to weigh on you. And I think until you sit down. Yep. Yep. No, I, I but, get you. Cause like I felt that going into my third game. Cause I was like, I have to win this game to go on to the round four to be in yeah. the, to the top playing field to to for the tournament and I ended up losing only because it was a night fight game and I had like nothing to do night fight stuff and the guy was an all crewed tau army which Oops. you know they they see in the dark and I was like Ugh. <laughs> yeah so I I mean and I it was I played really really well with my back against the wall I didn't realize that was going to happen either like like that that thing that it was like a switch flipped and uh i just went into like kill mode and i would like dude rounds and the thing is it's swiss pairing right so when i'm zero and two i'm playing another person who's zero and two so right. but i i like snap back and killed my next two opponents just like dominating um so it it was it was uh it was really uh helpful though to have that experience to like basically like go all the way against the raw the wall and then ride that pressure right back up um so that was really cool it was a good experience um and i'm actually excited to play more flesh and blood like i said i played another tournament last night um so it was uh it's very very cool and i had a great time so now after playing it do would do you still agree with your decision to bring chain or do you think you should have brought someone else? Oh no, I would have got hosed if I played anyone, any, any, any hero other than chain. I maybe wish I had practiced more, um, and specifically more into a couple of the matchups that I didn't practice enough against. I didn't practice enough against viscerai. Um, and my game two was against the viscer, the viscerai. And that was the one where I like critically misplayed the first couple turns. Right. Um, but you know, and I, I didn't play enough into star the Bravo Star of the Show, the the current meta nightmare. Um, so it you know it's just a matter of uh, maybe playing a couple more games beforehand, and also not being so fucking nervous um, for game one and two. Yeah. So do you think uh, again? This is more on the on the tournament side of it more than anything flesh and blood related. But do you think now that you've done a calling that you'll be more relaxed going into your next one, or do you just think that that's there's just going to be a nervousness to it in I th- general? I think there will be a nervousness going into it in general. But the thing is, is that the callings are always preceded by a series of tournaments leading into them. Um, and we had a couple of them here. They were called pro quests. And I think if I had played in a couple of those pro quests, which were 40 to 64 player events, I would have, uh, pr- I probably done better. And I think going into another calling, I would try to enter more of those like mid-level tournaments, um, just to like have more of the competitive pressure, you know, cause it, it, the, the normal Monday tournaments, it's like 18 people that I like last night we had 18 people there and like half of those guys I'm like good friends with. So, you know, it's like it's it's all laughs and there's no stakes. No one really cares if if somebody wins and there was somebody who was looking for the prize that week. Generally, they'll trade it to the person who really wanted it. So right. there's not a, there's not a lot of pressure in an event like that. So I think going into the next one, I would try to uh, play more higher stakes uh, 
events leading into the multi hundred entrant tournament. No, that, that's I've, that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes that makes a ton of sense. Um, I like that. Um, what else was I going to ask you? Uh, I don't know, Chris. What else you got for him? Um, so. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think. <laughs> um, so what you do the rest of the tournament? So obviously, you know, day two, you know, day one, you said you did so, some of the, the that, shapeshifter. That fun, the shapeshifter. Day two, obviously, you're doing the the calling. The, the calling. W- what was day three? Day three was fun. So day three, I showed up and there was a vendor that had airshipped a bunch of boxes, like huge amount of boxes, like too many boxes. And I think they they probably didn't sell quite as many as they expected to. So they started selling like buy one, get one free boxes of flesh and blood. Oh, so if, so oh, wow. I bought it. I bought a case. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why not at that yeah, point? Right? Duh. Yeah. Half price case seems good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which so did you bought, get? To, did you get Everfest or did you go with the, did. one of the older yeah. ones? Okay. Everfest. Yeah. I, I bought a, I bought a case of Everfest first ed. Yeah. Um, next time next time hit me up because that's a good deal yeah sorry it was like one of those things where like i saw it and i was like are you fucking kidding me (laughs) (laughs) i text ella ella i think i'm gonna buy a buy one get one (laughs) deal of flesh and blood she was like do it it's not you're not gonna get a chance like that again so yeah hell yeah um so i did that um and then uh, oh, I played a <laughs> I played in a Magic the Gathering Neon Dynasty on demand draft. That was fun. Um, just because they had they were twenty dollars and they had on demand drafts going all day, so I did that. Um, I ended up only playing so, two of the three rounds, but that was cool. So on demand draft is that just kind of like you get enough people signed up, you go. Yeah, exactly. Thing, you you put okay. your money in, they sit you down at a table, and as soon as there's eight people sitting down, you start cracking packs. Oh, that's pretty cool. That sounds like fun. Yep. And those were, that was like, and Flesh and Blood had those too. They had Tales of Aria on demand the whole weekend, but I've done a ton of Tales of Aria drafts and I just didn't want more Tales of Aria cards. So I uh, I was like, yeah, whatever. Um, Plus they were more expensive for whatever reason. The Flesh and Blood drafts were like $10 more. So it was probably a, it was probably a nice mental break too. Yeah, exactly. Um, So I played two rounds. I did the draft. I played the first two rounds that on demand. That was fun. Um, and then I met up with, um, one of our locals, Alex and Alex and I went and sat down and he was, he was like mentally exhausted too, because he had played in the calling the previous day. And then he had just won one of those side events and the the side event that he played in was called a daily double. And that was the one where all the prize tickets are doubled. Um, and he was like, he was trying to win 900 tickets because that was double first place. Um, and he did, and he was just like, Oh, I need a break. Like I've just been like turned so high. You know what I mean? It's like, just need to play some casual yeah. games. So we just played blitz. Uh, and I, I don't know. I don't know for how long. I don't remember when we sat down, but we, I played blitz with Alex and we talked and bullshitted until Howard's judge shift was over and he came over and told us he was done. Um, and basically, you know, while we're playing, we're also paying attention to how people are doing in the calling because you can all hear it over the loudspeakers and like our friends. We had a couple people that made it into day two and we had a couple friends that also played in the battle hardened tournament, which was the the the, the big tournament the next, the, on day three. Um, and one of our friends went five and one in that tournament. And so like he oh, was wow. coming over. Yeah, yeah. He was coming over and we were like super congratulating him every time awesome. he'd come over. And yeah, because he was just doing super well. And it, it was crazy because he he opened the weekend. So in, in his his total events played for Friday and Saturday, he was 0 and 13. <laughs> like he hadn't won a single game all weekend. And then he You're started the battle hardened. Yeah, yeah, he started the battle hard and went five and one. He was like the the they they cut to the top eight and he was like sixteenth. Oh so man. I know, I know, I know. And it was like two hundred and ninety people playing in that tournament. Whew. And that's one that's invite only? No, that one was another open entrance. Like basically what it is is they they, they and they do it like this on purpose, right? They have the calling, and the calling cuts to the second day and it's everybody who who only had two losses cuts to the next day 
And then oh, the battle way, hardened. Then, okay, I got you. Everybody, every daddy who didn't make day two can still play in a big, big stakes, high stakes tournament for like gold foil legendary cards as the like prizes, oh, nice. like big deal prize cards and exclusive play mats. The top eight players in that tournament got exclusive battle hardened play mats. So there was, you know, there was reason to play in the battle hardened if you scrubbed out of the calling. Um, but yeah, he went five and one in that. And that was like, it was super exciting to like ride that wave with him. That's awesome. So that's what I did. I played a bunch of casual games with my buddy, Alex. Um, we played, basically we played his Kasai uh, blitz deck into my Reinar blitz deck. Like, I don't know, three or four or five, six times. I don't even remember anymore. Um, <laughs> and then, and then we played a CC Leviah, uh, I played my Leviah, he played his Bolton, and that was another fun game. But yeah, just a lot of flesh and blood, casual flesh and blood the second day. Very cool. Yeah. So that was my calling event. Sounds like you had a ton of fun. Yeah, it was a really great day. Really great. So, so yeah. No, go ahead, Paul. I was going to say, so if you had, say, a friend who was going to go to one of these for the first time, what would you recommend they do? <sighs> Boy, I think it depends on what they're into doing, right? Like, if you wanted to go and play in the calling, like you wanted to go and you wanted to play in the main event, um, what I would say is that you should – um play the deck you're gonna you're gonna play a lot and play it into everything that's for the that's that's popular in the meta and the only, only way to do that is to be invested in the game right so that like going into this calling you'd know that the three decks you had to play in the most would be bravo star of the show prism uh and viscerai because those are the three that the most of the super competitive players are playing mm -hmm. so play into those matchups a lot um, and also, uh, get out of your own head. Like, just remember that like you're, you can only play as well as you can play. Right. And as long as you go into every game, um, being very intentional, I guess that's my other advice is that s play slow. Um, 55 minutes is a lot of time to play a normal game of flesh and blood and classic constructed. And so you don't want to like rush through your games and do something like forget to tick up your find all spring, spring tunic, right? Like you want to remember your tunic trigger every turn. You want to right. play, if you're playing chain, like I was, for example, you want to play your cards in the correct order. <laughs> like, cause it, the, the, the way, the order in which chain plays his cards is very important. And that's how I lost that second game is that I sequenced my cards badly. Um, so just remember those kinds of things, like play slowly and play intentionally uh, practice, practice, practice the deck that you're taking, play it until you're sick of playing it. Um, and, uh, and also just remember like that you're supposed to be having fun too, right? It's like you play the game cause you love the game. So just remember to be having fun while you're playing. Those would be my, that would be my advice if you're going to go play competitively. Otherwise, I think what you should do is you should walk in, pick something on the prize wall you want and then just enter in many side events as you can until you win that prize on the prize wall. Cause I would have had just as much fun. <laughs> I would have had just as much doing fun doing that over the weekend. Yeah. That was going to be my, that was going to be my question of like someone that's like just coming just to have a good time. Like what should they do then? And that, they actually, that, that, they, and they actually had a package is $150 and it was called the unlimited go again package. Um, <laughs> Yeah, pretty fun, right? And it was it was unlimited entry into the side events. Oh, that's, that's so, awesome! So you could just play in every side event that you had that you know was available while you were free. So you could just pick and play in all of them. Uh, that's not bad. And that's that, not bad at all. Not bad at all. Yep. So with Adepticon next week, you said you mentioned you're going to that. How much flesh and blood are you playing there? I fly, oh boy, I hope not a lot. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna be running. There's a there's a person from the like from between here in Milwaukee from me, um, and I'm gonna be meeting up with him. And he's gonna want to play some Flesh and Blood, maybe one game. I, ho I hope only one game because I I really want to spend like I want I, I don't not like playing Flesh and Blood right. If someone, someone wants to shuffle up and and wrangle cards, I'm down. But 
I'm only going to go for Saturday. And since I'm only going to go for Saturday, I really want to spend some time at the, the slow death games booth with Chris. Um, I really want to hang out with Shay, uh, a loyal listener, friend of the show and friend at this point. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. and so I want to hang out with Shay. Um, plus I've got some friends that are also coming from the area. Uh, and I want, I really want to demo, uh, both Rivenstone, which is a new game that's coming out from, is it Anvil games, Sledgehammer games, broken Anvil games. God, I was close. Uh, developed at least in part by Will Hungerford. Yep. Mm. Okay. So those models check. look amazing. By the way, yeah. people check them out. The Rivenstone, the Rivenstone stuff looks great. So I want to try that. Gorgeous. Uh, but also, Ash Barker uh, released a new game this week called Steel Rift, which is a six millimeter uh, mech combat game played on a three by three table. That um, sounds cool. Yeah, so I want to play a little. I want to play a little Steel Rift uh, while I'm there. It has some neat mechanics, Paul. Like one of the things that it does is so. You, I I think you're gonna like this when you are uh, when you're playing this game. If you're you're the active player when you shoot because you're in you're in mechs right you're in mechs in the mm-hmm. future. It is right. assumed everything you're firing hits. Like it, it, the okay. game, the game assumes you are on target when you start pulling right. the trigger. Because you got um, super futuristic targeting programs. Exactly, the game assumes it, and so all the roles are defensive. That's cool. Huh. I like that. Um, that makes it a little also, bit easier. Yeah, and also it has a thing where if your your model hasn't activated, you can reactive fire as long as the model that you're reactive firing at is in your front arc. Um. So that you can give up your activation and on a normal activation, you get two actions, but you can give up your two actions to return fire. Which makes sense because if, if you can see them, it might work out you better. You can shoot them. Yep. And, and again, it's the same rules where it is assumed when you return fire, your return fire is on target. Jay, I can't imagine any other games that are like that, that I really love. <laughs> is that is that what uh uh the chain of command does? No, I'm just I'm just thinking about uh the return fire, right? I'm oh, just infinity, infinity, right? Arrows, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Arrows. Not, not the yeah. auto hits. No. Oh my gosh, if you auto hit and chain of command, oh. yeah. Anyway, it's like the opposite. It's a bitch to hit people because they're in cover and it makes sense. They right. want to live. And yeah. you know, really bad machine guns and you know weapons at the time. And I'm sure those cover rules that weren't being that I wasn't account I wasn't seeing in the little demo. I just watched, you know, watched them the play, the like let's play on YouTube. And it, the thing that I got from that let's play was that like when you're shooting in, it, open to open, uh, it's just you roll a number of defense dice <laughs> equal to the bullets coming in. That's uh, crazy. I like that yep. idea. Uh, well, it sounds like it sounds like we're gonna have a lot to a uh, lot to cover next week when you come back. Yeah, is it, yeah. Um, and then maybe this is getting too far in the weeds for for the discussion for tonight. But is it like a, a, just a rule set, or is he producing models too? Oh, Death Ray Designs is making the models, and there's a full model. Oh no shit! Yep, yep. Well then, oh, well then I I like the Death Ray Designs. Guys. Yeah, we we know a few of the Death Ray Design guys, and we we like those guys. Yeah, they're good people. All right, I'm yeah. on board. I don't care what you say. I'm on board. It's going to be awesome, chops. Don't don't tell me otherwise. Yeah, so that's steel. <laughs> that's steel rift. I mean, it looked like a ton of fun. It looked like the kind of like fast paced, like ju- it just just light enough to be sort of like f- like really fun, but also like chunky enough that you don't feel like you're doing nothing. Um, mm-hmm. So I uh, I real so it like or not. It's chunky enough that it makes it like your decisions are meaningful, right? Right. So. That seem it seems like a good time, and I think Shay wants to show me Bot Wars, which is like a Transformer style game. Oh, very cool! So, yeah, so that those are the things I'm planning for this upcoming weekend. And and don't forget to potentially walk away with your hundred dollar box of Martells. Oh, dude, wait! If there's even a chance that those are there, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize that was even a possibility. I didn't even think about it. Um, I mean, I wouldn't put it past Simon. They've already started yeah. showing the box art, so it's true. 
I know for sure they'll have the the new Starks and Lannisters. I guess those have been at retail for like a month already. Yeah, I'm those sure have been out already. There. Yeah, I, I yeah. was I was very tempted to pick up the Starks box the other day. God, I'm mm-hmm. so out of touch. So out of yes, touch. Well, yes, no you idea. Are. Had no idea. We need to make hey, a trip man. out to Durham and get you caught up. <laughs> yeah, it's time to it's time to get you caught back up. Um, well, I I know, but, uh, yeah I need I need freaking uh, uh, Targaryen cards. That's oh, that's yeah. like how far behind I am. Get yeah. those too. Um, well, yeah. So that was it. That was my weekend at the calling. A um, lot of lot of flesh and blood games played over the weekend. You know, like I think somewhere close to thirty probably total over the weekend Jeez. between you know like just playing casually playing competitively um yeah uh and then counting last night too right because i played four games last night so So i don't think we ever asked how'd you do at the event last night oh cleaned house buddy undefeated nice (laughs) first first to play (laughs) so yeah yeah you were riding you were riding that high energy weren't you yeah. Also, I was piloting. I was so I was also piloting the deck that I'm planning on playing into. So, we just finished the classic constructed season. So, flesh and blood competitive play goes in in seasons, and the season we just ended was a fl- uh, all all um, classic constructed, and we're moving into the skirmish season, which is all blitz events this year. Um, and so I played the blitz deck that I plan on taking to many of the upcoming skirmish events, which are that, that mid level, like 24 to 40 player events. Mm -hmm. Um, and I played the deck that I built to play that format. Um, and I am very happy with it. It did very well. Clearly, clearly it did you very well. It was funny. It, it, people at at, uh, at the event were like, "It turns out you aren't just a Levia player. You're just a brute player." Because I'm playing <laughs> Rhinar. Nice. Um, my yeah. my Blitz deck is a is a beat your face in Rhinar deck. Yeah, you and I might need to be talking because Rhinar is one that I'm wanting to try out and build. And and I so hey, here's a here's a fun thing for you, Chris. I put this deck into FabDB. And then I did an export to TCG player because I was curious because, you know, like uh, a really competitive flesh and blood deck for classic constructed. Like if you're building like, I don't know, Prism or or Bravo, you can spend like 800 to over a thousand dollars on a deck. Right. Like. Right. That's that's not unknown. This Reinar deck that I went four and oh yesterday, if you bought all of the singles, like if you didn't have any of the cards and you bought it, it's one hundred and sixty eight dollars and seventy cents. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, and I'm a, and I'm pretty sure that I probably have at least a good some portion of it, of it already. A good portion because yeah. I've been I I bought I've already bought a few uh yep. Reiner singles already. Yeah. The most expensive piece is the scab skin leathers, which is his legendary legs and those are like 61. So, I had a local guy here that was willing to sell me sell them to me cuz he had extras. There you go. Have to, where you talk to that gentleman and see if he still has yeah. them. Yeah, and I think um, all of the all of the majestics and legendaries add up to like a hundred and fifty eight bucks. So like, that, I mean, it's um, it's not an expensive deck in in relative terms. Like, there is a single card if you want to play Bravo Star of the Show. There is a single card you need that's more expensive than this entire deck. So. So That's pretty good. Crazy. <laughs> and this is why I never play TCGs. <laughs> yeah, it's the dark side. The dark side of TCGs is that they are expensive. Um, yeah. But cool. You know, you do what you love, right? And you spend like none of these hobbies are cheap, right? Miniatures, you know, how much money worth of paint do you have at your desk? So, uh, do I don't. It's embarrassing. I don't want to yeah, answer that. The, the the dirty little secret of miniatures gaming, right? Is how much we spend on hobby tools, but like. Um, yeah, uh, in, in relative terms though, uh, I feel really good about having a competitive level deck that's less than 200 bucks. Cause I think that's otherwise unheard of in, in most TCGs even, uh, unless you're playing like popper, right? Right. So popper. yeah. All right. Popper is a gonna... magic, the gathering format where you play only commons. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, uh, I don't think I have any other questions for you. Potter, you got anything else for him? 
No, I think uh, I think this was a good conversation. Pretty fun, just in tournament prep in general, right? Like the get out of your own head practice. <laughs> um, right. Have and, fun and be cool. Have fun. Yeah, good luck. Have fun. That's the that's the like that's the uh, the tournament mindset. And I think if you go in with that mindset, you won't be disappointed. That's um, uh, yeah. That's a good way of looking at it. It's a good way of looking at it. Um, all right. I mean, that kind of sounds like your last thought, Chops. But do you have any other last thoughts? No, good luck. Have fun. That's a good one. All right. Potter, final thoughts? Um, no. I mean, sounds like you had an awesome time. Sounds oh, yeah. fun. Oh, yeah. All right. And my, and my final thought is, um, Chops, please help me build a Frost Guardian deck. Can do. Sweet. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, thanks for, thanks for being with us through yet another long gap. Um, which sucks, but, uh, I think that's behind us. And, uh, so thanks to everybody for supporting us through our craziness. And, um, thanks to Static City for the music. Thanks to our patrons. And thanks to these two schmuckos for still talking to me all the time about games. Yeah. Yup. No doubt, buddy. Bye.